happened as Pythian V for Agasilas of Cyrene, winner of the chariot race. <clears throat> Wide is the strength of wealth when a mortal man receives it from destiny's hand, and joining it with unsullied excellence takes it as attendant who brings him many friends. O Arcasilas, favoured by the gods, you have surely been searching for this, along with glory, from the first steps of your brilliant life, through the goodwill of Castor of the Golden Chariot, who after winter's rain spreads a bright calm over your blessed heart. In truth, the wise handle power in a more noble fashion, even when it is given by a god. And so with you as you walk the way of justice, great prosperity surrounds you. First because you are a king, and the inherited prestige of great cities brings with it this most revered dignity, when it is allied to judgment. And then you are now blessed because you have won glory at the famous Pythian Games in the chariot race, and so have received this celebratory revel of men which brings delight to Apollo. Do not then forget, as your praise is sung in Aphrodite's pleasant garden at Cyrene, to attribute all your success to the god, and also to hold Carotos dear above all your companions. When he returned to the palace of Batidae, just rulers, he did not bring with him excuse, the daughter of hindsight, but after being entertained beside Castalia's waters, he crowned your head with the victorious chariot's prize. One with reins impaired through the twelve swift laps of the sacred course. For he shattered none of his strong equipment. And now all that intricate work of skilled craftsmen, which he drove when he crossed the river at Cresa, on his way to the god's deep valley, is hung up in dedication. A chamber of cypress wood encloses it near the statue cut in one piece from the living wood, which bow-wielding Cretans set up in the temple on Parnassus. It is therefore proper to greet one's benefactor with enthusiasm. And on you, son of Alexabias, the fair-haired graces have shed brightness. You are blessed in that, after great exhortation, you have a memorial of mighty words of praise. Forty charioteers fell, but you kept your chariot intact with fearless spirit, and have now returned from the glorious games to the plain of Libya and your ancestral city. No one is without his allotted share of toil, nor will be. Yet the age-old prosperity of Batos persists. Though the fortune it confers varies this way and that, it is a strong tower for the city and for strangers a bright splendour. Even deep-roaring lions fled from, fled from him in fear when he addressed them in his curious speech. Apollo, the colony's founder, filled the beasts with sheer terror, so that the oracles he gave to Cyrene's steward should not be unfulfilled. Apollo it is who dispenses cures for painful diseases to men and women. He has also given them the lyre, granting the muse to whoever he wishes, instilling peace and good order in their hearts. He is present in the secret places of his oracle, from where he caused the mighty sons of Heracles and of Egimios to settle in Lacedaemon and Argos and holy Pylos. He makes known that my cherished glory is from Sparta, whence sprang the Agadae, my ancestors, who came to Terra, not without the gods' favour, some fate led them. From there we have inherited a communal meal of many sacrifices. Your Carnea, Apollo, and at your feast we honour Cyrene's well-built city. Here live the Trojans who delight in bronze weapons, the sons of Antinor, for they came here with Helen after they had witnessed their own land swathed in the smoke of war. And that chariot-driving people is duly welcomed with sacrifices and hailed with gifts by those whom Aristoteles brought in swift ships. Opening up a deep path through the salt sea, he planted larger sacred groves for the gods, and laid down a straight broad way to be a paved road, sounding to the hammer of horses' hoofs, at processions in honour of Apollo, who 
brings help to mortals. There at the far end of the marketplace he lies apart in death, blessed when he lived among men, and thereafter revered by the people as a hero. Separate from him before the palace lie the other holy kings whose destiny places them in Hades. It may be that in their minds below the earth they can hear of these great deeds of prowess, sprinkled with soft dew and accompanied by waves of revel song, bringing them happiness for themselves and just share with their son Archisilus and his distinction. It is right for him to invoke Phoebus of the golden sword in songs of young men, since he has been repaid from Pitho by this elegant victory song for his expenditure. The discriminating commend him, and I shall repeat what men say. He cultivates a mind and eloquence beyond his years, and in boldness he is a long-winged eagle among other birds. In competition he has the strength of a tower, in the muses' company he takes wing through his dear mother, and he has proved himself a skilled charioteer. He has walked with boldness along every road which could bring his people renown, and now a god has generously brought his power to fruition. And so in time to come, you blessed children of Kronos, allow him to possess an equal eminence in word and counsel that no stormy blasts of autumn winds may disrupt his life to come. In truth, the mighty mind of Zeus governs the destiny of men he loves. I pray that he may award this prize to Batossa's race at Olympia.